Exercise 7. Following are two income statements for VIX Company for the year ended December 31st. The left-hand column is prepared before any adjusting entries are recorded, and the right column includes the effects of adjusting entries. The company records cash receipts and payments related to unearned and prepaid items in balance sheet accounts. Analyze the statements and prepare the 10 adjusting entries that likely were recorded. And note that 30% of the $6,000 adjustment for fees earned has been earned but not billed, and the other 70% has been earned by performing services that were paid for in advance. All right, so this one's kind of interesting. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the difference between the unadjusted and adjusted amounts, and then recreate what we assume happened based on the change. And in the far right-hand column, I've calculated the amount of the change, just to make this a little bit faster. So let's start at the top, fees earned. The unadjusted balance was 24000 and the adjusted balance is 30000 So we increased revenues by $6,000. we are told that 30% of the $6,000 adjustment has been earned but not billed. So this is an accrual. We're going to be increasing the asset, accounts receivable. Debiting an asset and crediting a revenue. That journal entry is a debit to accounts receivable for $1,800, 30% of $6,000, and a credit to fees earned for $1,800. The remaining $4,200, $6,000 less the $1,800, is due to performing services that were paid for in advance. So for that case, we had already recorded a liability, and now the adjusting entry must have been a decrease to that liability because we've already done the work. Again, debiting the balance sheet the liability account, and crediting the revenue account. The adjusting entry must have been a debit to unearned fees for $4,200 and a credit to fees earned. These two adjusting entries resulted in an increase to fees earned of $6,000. Let's go back to the list. Commissions earned was the same on both the unadjusted and adjusted trial balance, so we must not have had any adjusting entries affecting commissions earned. The next account, Depreciation Expense on Computers, had an unadjusted balance of zero and an adjusted balance of 1500 Similarly, the balance in Depreciation Expense on the Office Furniture increased from zero to 1750 So there must have been two adjusting entries for depreciation. The first one, debiting Depreciation Expense on Computers for $1,500 and crediting accumulated depreciation on the computers for the same amount. The second entry was to record the depreciation of the office furniture, debit depreciation expense for $1,750, and credit accumulated depreciation on the office furniture for the same amount. Notice that there's a separate accumulated depreciation account for each of our depreciable assets. The next account on the income statement is salary's expense. Its balance went from $12,500 up to $14,950. Chances are we accrued that liability increasing the year-end liability for the number of days that our employees have worked but not yet been paid. That adjusting entry debited the expense account, increasing the expense, and created the liability. The probable adjusting entry is a debit to salaries expense and a credit to salaries payable. The next account on our income statement is insurance expense. It went from zero to $1,300. Insurance is paid in advance and we're told that the amount was put into the asset account. At this point in time, though, the asset has been partially used, so the adjusting entry must have decreased the asset prepaid insurance, which would result in a debit to an expense account and a reduction in the value of the asset. The probable adjusting entry would be a debit to insurance expense and a credit to prepaid insurance. The next line item on the income statement is rent expense. Rent expense went from $3,800 to $4,500, increasing the expense by $700. Now this one I find a little bit strange, because generally your rent is paid in advance. So I would probably assume that the adjusting entry was decreasing an asset, debiting rent expense, and crediting prepaid rent. But in this case, the author says the answer is a debit to rent expense for $700, and a credit to rent payable. This journal entry would imply not that we had prepaid our rent, but that we're behind in our rent. Office supplies expense went from zero to $480. Office supplies have to be purchased before they're used, 
so we have a balance in the asset account supplies, which apparently is now too high. So during the adjusting entry process, the asset supplies was decreased. The journal entry debited the expense account, supplies expense, and credited the asset supplies. The probable adjusting entry debits the expense account for $480, the difference between the unadjusted and adjusted amounts, and credits the asset account off of supplies. The next item on our income statement is advertising expense. Advertising expense increased from $2,500 to $3,000. Now assuming that we did not prepay our advertising, we would be increasing a liability. Chances are we placed an ad and have not yet been billed for the services. The probable adjusting entry is an accrual of a payable, debiting an expense account, and crediting a liability. The adjusting entry would be a debit advertising expense and a credit to advertising payable. And the last item is utilities expense. Its balance increased from an unadjusted balance of $1,250 to an adjusted balance of $1,320, increasing the expense by $70. Chances are this is also an accrual of a payable the fact that we've consumed the utilities but have not yet been billed. So we would be increasing liability, debiting the income statement with the expense account, and crediting the balance sheet with a payable. The probable adjusting entry is a debit to utilities expense and a credit to utilities payable.